the security pat-down controversy south of the border. Joining us is Ivan Eland. He's joining us from Washington, and he is with the Center on Peace and Liberty. Ivan, good of you to join us. Thank you. Thank you. Where do you stand on the controversial body scanners, the pat-down procedures that have outraged so many Americans? Well, I think the uh, body scanners and the pat-downs are really a governmental shakedown. And I think what's happened here is the real, the last incident we had was on cargo. And cargo is the real problem, uh, the security deficiency. But uh, government bureaucracies use major incidents to do what they would like to do uh, anyway, but they can't under normal circumstances. And so we, we, even though the incident was, had to do with cargo, they're putting in uh, these pat-downs, aggressive pat-downs. And it's really, uh, somebody pointed out, a traveler pointed out that if uh, somebody did this to you that wasn't, did, didn't work for the government, it would be sexual assault. So I think uh, many people are saying, uh, no, this goes over the top, these scanners, which you can see body parts uh, and that sort of thing. And mm -hmm. then, of course, the aggressive pat-downs. And then there's supposed to be a, um, a uh, sort of a walkout or a walk around, I guess you'd say, these machines uh, next Wednesday in, before the American Thanksgiving. Okay, when you said it was a shakedown, though, what are you uh, inferring or implying there? Are you saying that the purchase of the scanners was just a big scam? It was selling false security and someone made a lot of money there? Or what are you saying? No, I think what the government does is it, it takes advantage of uh, crises to put in measures that they would like to put, under, put in anyway, but uh, have nothing to do with the current crisis. And, of course, the last incident we had was cargo bombs. This has nothing to right. do with cargo and everything to do with passengers. And this is... Uh, quite, uh, like, in, in a larger sense, uh, the 9-11 attacks were used by George Bush to invade Iraq. It's the same sort of thing, the bait and switch. And this is how uh, government works here in the United States. But I, I want to ask you about this point. I mean, some, certainly the security, some security experts from Israel would say, well, why don't, you know, why don't you Americans do what we're doing at Ben Gurion Airport, for example? We're using psychological screening. We use, you know, some would term it as a, a method of profiling. Is that something America should be using? No, I don't think so. First of all, Israel is an embattled state uh, under attack uh, all the time uh, from various uh, unfriendly neighbors or whatever. And, uh, you know, we don't, uh, the U.S. and Canada are an island of stability uh, compared to that. So I don't think we ought to be ad admiring the Israeli uh, armed state mentality towards these things. And also, I think profile, this, this sort of psychological profiling, these uh, airport security people are not psychologists. I mean, you could be fidgeting or uh, nervous because you're nervous about flying or you're nervous that they're doing these invasive uh, and intrusive uh, security measures. So, uh, you know, these things, uh, that lie detector tests are not admissible in court for that reason. This is the same thing. You don't know how, uh, you know, if somebody's registering on the lie detector, you don't know why that is. And, and, and the same thing with psych looking at them uh, psychologically and trying to find out what their psychological state is. Just because you're nervous, that doesn't mean you're going to attack the plane. Okay, and you mentioned that, you know, you don't see these body scanners or increased pat-downs as a solution to cargo bombs, for example. But in fairness, I mean, the cargo bombs are something new. Uh, the existing measures were no doubt put in place as a response to the shoe bomber, the underwear bomber, right? Well, of course, we went through the 9-11. The we had the uh, cabin reinforcement doors. Uh, then we w they went to shoe bombing. We went to, took off our shoes and went to liquid bombing. We can't have liquids under three right. ounces. So they always seem to be behind the threat. And this is, uh, they're piling uh, threat on threat or, or, you know, procedure on procedure. And one of the reasons that they overdo the passenger security is nobody goes and looks to see where their, uh, you know, pet UPS package or their uh, cargo comes in at the ports. They, but they do notice security at the airports, and they're trying to make the people uh, feel safe. And I think they've really overdone it. So uh, let me ask you I this. I think they're getting a lot of pushback. Yeah, Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, as you know, is now saying, well, this is going to be our new method of attack, these smaller cargo-type bombs. Uh, in light of that, what, what needs to change immediately if, in fact, that's true? Do we even listen to what the terrorists are saying? Well, I think mo even mo in the cargo area, what you don't want is uh, a cargo that travels on passenger planes to blow up because it blows up the passengers. If a cargo plane blows up, it's very unfortunate, don't get me wrong, that the pilot and the co-pilot get blown up, but they're not, you're not taking 350 right. people in a spectacular carnage. So I think, and that you have to have some consideration for, for commerce, too. If you start screening this stuff, this is going to create a real mess, and, uh, you know, the economy is bad enough as it is without uh, impeding it with uh, further things. So I think even in the cargo area, you have to be a little bit more ca careful, and I think most of the cargo, in fact, 
fact, all the cargo on passenger planes is already screened. So I think uh, th they really don't really need to do much of anything. All right. Ivan Eland with the Center for Peace and Liberty joining us. We appreciate your time. Thank you.